Okay, so the fundamental difference between a whiskey highball and a Tom Collins or anything that fits into either one of those categories is that a whiskey highball is typically just your main spirit and seltzer or club soda, maybe a garnish, but that's about it. A Tom Collins, on the other hand, is a sour that's been lengthened with soda water served with ice in a tall Collins glass. That brings us to today's cocktail, which is a Ross Collins. It's a rye whiskey Tom Collins, which sounds like it could be the direct inspiration for the name, but I guess it isn't. You'd have to buy the book to check it out, which I don't get a kickback for, but but you should still buy this book. Anyway, this will be my first time giving this cocktail a try and I'm expecting it to be pretty good. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? It's a fizzy rye whiskey sour. Come on, of course it's gonna be great. As some of my more astute viewers may have noticed, the book in question is Sasha Petrosky's Regarding Cocktails, and today's recipe is specifically from the Highball chapter. In spite of the differences between Highballs, Fizzes, Rickies, and Collins recipes, they are all found under the heading of Highball Cocktails in this book. And you know what? It works just fine. So let's start with a cocktail shaker and combine 3 quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, three quarters of an ounce of fresh lemon juice, three dashes of Angostura bitters, two ounces of rye whiskey. Today I'm using Old Overholt Bonded Rye. And two thin slices of orange with a third reserved for garnish. Add a large single ice cube to the tin and give it a good shake. Add an ice spear to a Collins glass and then strain the cocktail over the ice. As I've said several times before, cobbler shakers are not the best when it comes to muddled fruit as their strainers are easily clogged. Not to worry, I'll just grab a julep strainer to rescue the situation. Finally, top the drink with carbonated water garnish with a reserved orange slice and a cocktail cherry, add a straw, and that is the Ross Collins. All right, well, moment of truth. Time to give this thing a try and find out how good it is. Like I've said so many times before, I've never had this recipe before. I don't even think I've had anything quite similar to this, right? Like, uh, I haven't had something even one or two steps away from this. This is pretty, this is pretty new for me. So I'm gonna shut up and give it a taste. Cheers. Ooh, that's good. Okay, so right up front, you start to taste the bite of the rye whiskey. There's a maltiness, but then I think it's something between the Angostura and the orange is creating this almost like peanut butter and jelly sort of flavor in there. Then after you swallow, you get this kind of spice on your tongue from the Angostura and the rye. And then you just kind of get a light, sweet orange lemon finish after that. And of course, bubbles. <laughs> the texture of carbonation is always so enjoyable. It doesn't necessarily have a crazy long evolution for a cocktail, but that malt flavor kind of stays with you the whole way through. And so even though it doesn't necessarily evolve that many times, like there's kind of three main flavors that you get out of it, but the malt that you get at the beginning and the fruit that you get at the end kind of stay with you for quite a while after you, you take a drink. So it's, it's really nice because it has staying power. It doesn't fade away. A lot of times orange in cocktails will do that. It'll just kind of like and be gone. Now, I do really like my choice of rye here. Currently in my liquor cabinet, I have this stuff and I have Rittenhouse rye. I think the Rittenhouse might be a little bit too aggressive in flavor. I think you'd lose the orange flavor and I don't think it would play well. Something like Bullet would be really nice. It's a bit on the sweeter side, so I, I think a slightly spicy rye, but not, not too far is what you want. And really, I think this Old Overholt Bonded is is really perfect, which of course I can't say that definitively because I've only tried it this way right now, but I do really, really like it. So, you know, I suppose that's a pretty good ringing endorsement for this particular recipe. I want to take a drink and then eat the cocktail cherry and see how that is. I love garnishes. 
that go well with the drink. Look at me, I've almost finished the freaking cocktail. It hasn't been that long. This is incredibly drinkable. If you like whiskey and you want a great summertime cooler drink, this is the ticket. If you like the video, hit the button. If you don't like the video, please hit the other button. Please, 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 please. It helps the algorithm. <laughs> and either way, tell me about it in the comments down below. I do appreciate every single view, so thank you for watching. My name is Luke. This is the Homemade Edition, and I hope to see you and maybe some of your friends, so don't forget to share, in the next video. Until next time, cheers. Thank you.